Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to ITV Studios. Alhamdulillah, today we have the good fortune once again of engaging the regional director of Africa Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International, Hafiz Hassan Shunara. Welcome to ITV Studios, Hafiz Hassan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran for having me. Hafiz Hassan, regional director of Africa Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International. That's a big title uh, to be bearing. Tell us a little bit about Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International. Yes, Abdurrahman, like you mentioned, all our uh, shows on ITV, and uh, let's, let's give the viewers a brief history of Africa Muslim Agency, where it all began, who formed the organization, the aims and objectives, and the projects that we undertake on a, on a yearly basis. Africa Muslim Agency began the early 1980s by a gentleman named Dr. Abdurrahman Sumait, uh, who comes from uh, Kuwait, uh, who said he passed away uh, the last September, Allah Falis Qabr al-Nur. Dr. Abdurrahman in the early 1980s used to travel a lot in Africa, to Malawi, to Madagascar, Gambia, Senegal. And on his travels to Africa, he's seen the conditions and the plight of those living in these countries. You know, the, the, the dire conditions that the, the people were living in. And in response to their conditions, in, alleviating, in trying to alleviate their condition and their plight, he formed the Africa Muslims Agency. Uh, Africa Muslims Agency South Africa started in 1987 by my late dad, Muhammad Farid Chunaram, Allah Falhiz Nur, who in the early 1980s used to travel to a lot of townships, informal settlements across South Africa. He used to do a lot of dawah programs uh, in the evenings, uh, himself and uh, a few other brothers. Just, and also, in, in, while they were going through the townships, while they were visiting the, the, the informal settlements, they obviously seen the conditions of people in these, in these localities. And it's obviously the dire conditions and difficult conditions they were living under. And in response, and like Dr. Rahman, in response to their conditions, in alleviate, trying to alleviate their condition and their plight, you know, used to do a lot of distribution of food parcels, uh, raising the awareness speaking in different community forums, uh, trying to raise the awareness and highlighting uh, their plight. Uh, I remember as a young man growing up in the house, my dad used to be away uh, uh, most of the year, you know, traveling through Africa, different countries, uh, you know, uh, seeing the, the conditions of people in Africa. And on his return, he used to show, show us photos and pictures of what he had seen and what he had taken there. And he used to go to a lot of masajid, uh, had a lot of talks. And, you know, at that time in the 80s, People in South Africa weren't aware of what's happening outside the borders of South Africa because we had our own challenges in this country. So, you know, at that time, he used to go to a lot of massages, like I said, uh, speak at a lot of forums. And, and I remember, us, uh, you know, going with him to various massages outside the mas massage, putting up pictures of, you know, what he just seen in Africa. And people used to look at these pictures and say, is that really happening in Africa? And, uh, and obviously, he used to res respond in affirmative. And there began the generosity of South African community. They were first, uh, that's where they became aware of what it's like in Africa. And they started donating generously towards uh, Africa and, and other parts of uh, other campaigns and projects that we still do up until today. Uh, the African Muslim Agency, uh, since 1987 up until today, have uh, conducted a lot of programs and campaigns. You know, we have the seasonal campaigns, the ongoing campaigns. Some of the seasonal campaigns, like your Ramadan Feed the Fasting program, which will be the focal point of today's discussion, as well as your winter campaign, your Udhiyah pro uh, program. Uh, but obviously we have the ongoing projects. And the ongoing projects is like your construction of your water wells, your boreholes, seeing to the orphans throughout the year, uh, you know, as uh, building massage, uh, in empowering students, skills development programs. These are some of the on ongoing campaigns which were initiated in the early 1987 uh, and is still ongoing, alhamdulillah. Well, alhamdulillah, as you mentioned, we're here today to engage a little bit about the month of Ramadan mm -hmm. and the Feed the Fasting project in particular. Um, we see that more than most of us back home would either be preparing spiritually uh, yourself, particularly belonging to the fraternity of Hufad. So a time to really get in touch with Quran. Alhamdulillah, we recite every day, but more so as a build up to the month of Ramadan. The moms and the sisters and the wives and the daughters and the nieces um, and sometimes the nephews as well, spending more time in the kitchen, you know, preparing those eats and treats, worrying about what it is that would be able to put on the table spread every day at iftar. Uh, the Feed the Fasting project is something that's couched, taking into consideration those people who are not looking at what are they going to have for the third or the fourth or the tenth iftar, but have the concern of will they have something early in the morning with which to start the fast at the time of suhoor. Tell us about the Feed the Fasting project. 
Well, the feed the fasting project is what the, what the project says, feed the fasting, is to feed the fasting, the poor, the needy, the hungry, uh, the destitute. Those fasting Muslims who do not have the means to put iftar on the table, those fasting Muslims do not have the means to have suhoor at the time of suhoor. So the African Muslim Feed the Fasting program is uh, three initiatives, if I may say. Uh, it has the Feed the, uh, the Iftar Suhoor meal box, uh, for if I may show the viewers here, it's a box uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, designed and initiated by my, my late dad. Uh, you know, it, it, it's suited uh, to give a, uh, or designed to give an iftar and suhoor meal for an individual. Uh, if I just show some of the contents, it has, you know, nutritious items like biscuits, nuts, dates, juice, um, crisp soup. Uh, as viewers can see, some biscuits here. We've got nutritious soup as well, uh, juice. There we go, and some crisp and nuts. And this, these are contents just for an individual for iftar and suhoor. Um, then we have the Ramadan winter hamper. And as you know, Ramadan is in the midst of winter. And uh, because Ramadan is in the midst of winter, this year we've included a blanket inside the Ramadan hamper. Now it's a hamper for a medium-sized family. It has all your, you know, your grocery items like your oil, your beans, your sugar, your rice, your flour, etc. But we've also included winter items like your blankets, candles, and other items essential to keep warmth. Because whilst, while people are fasting during the month of Ramadan, they'll also be cold. And we've given them these essential items for, for winter. And then obviously the third initiative is the Feed the Fasting program. The Iftar Suhoor program that will be conducting outside South Africa. The Iftar Suhoor meal box like I've just shown you, the Ramadan uh, hamper, that's for South Africa. It will be distributed across the country. And the Iftar Siam program will be conducted outside the South African borders. Uh, and, that's, and that will be distributed in various massages, which I'll elaborate uh, later on the show. Well, three different initiatives with regard to assisting those who are fasting. Uh, the Ramadan hamper, the Iftar Suhoor hamper, and the Feed the Fasting project. These are what we currently have um, now in Ramadan, inshallah, 1436. Um, but this project didn't start this year. It's been running for a number of years that eventually m brought us to the point where we have these three unique initiatives. Tell us about the history of the Feed the Fasting project. Feed the Fasting program uh, started back in 1987, uh, and like I gave the brief history, it started when uh, our former director, my lady, used to travel in the various uh, localities and townships across South Africa, especially during the month of Ramadan. Uh, I remember as a young boy going with him to various masajid, having iftar with the locals. Uh, you know, you have a spread, you have your dates and your milk spread and your zamzam, uh, and you should just share the iftar with the, with the fellow uh, brothers, um, seeing they did not have the means. And that's where it started with the African Muslim Asia, to put packs together, to distribute in these communities across South Africa. Alhamdulillah, yesterday, the organization reaches across the, count, uh, the country in the, in the distribution of these packs. And it's only through partnership which I'll elaborate uh, uh, further. But uh, that's the brief history of where it started. And, uh, and up until today, we do the distribution. How we do it is we partner with over 80 different organizations to ensure the reach across the country. Uh, you know, we have, uh, there exist ulama bodies, there exist volunteer groups, there exist community organizations in various parts of the country uh, who send their request to African Muslim Agency um, requesting hampers, iftar meals, dates, etc. To, for distribution to the month of Ramadan. And obviously, we, the African Muslim Agency vets this information. We ensure that the information is correct. Uh, and obviously, going through the information, we then allocate the same. And then we partner and in, in accompany these organizations to, the, to their communities. Well, as you've shown us in the Iftar Suhoor hamper or Iftar Suhoor box, um, there's nutritious food, but there's also food that's conducive to the type of season we're in, of uh, which is winter. You've also mentioned that in the Ramadan hamper, uh, there's winter warm you know, items, maybe a beanie, um, gloves, etc., etc. The convergence of these two times, that being winter and Ramadan, means that there's many more people that would be in need as opposed to Ramadan five years ago, ten years ago. How has this impacted on the scale of the project? Well, obviously, tremendously, it has a huge impact. Like you say, as Ramadan, in, the, in this instance, Ramadan is, is going more and more into winter. And how, and, uh, how, how we come to developing these uh, packs, if I may give you a brief history, how, how we put these packs together. You know, when we accompany organizations to their respective communities, we, one, we're ensuring that the donor's need has been fulfilled, that these packs have been given out. And the, the, the needy, most needy recipients are those benefiting from these packs. But when we are there, we, all, we obviously see how else can we improve the situation on the ground. Besides the hampers that we are giving out, besides the iftar pack that we're giving out, 
How else can we improve the condition of that community? How else can we enhance the work of that organization that's working on the ground? So come next year, that family is not asking for Ramadan hamper. They are able to assist a neighbor, inshallah. So we, we, look, we look at that and, that and, look, and when accompanying the, you know, the organization to the various communities, uh, we see there's a need for, apart from just food for Ramadan, there's a need for blankets, there's a need for, like you mentioned, beanies, uh, jackets, candles, etc. in some of the communities. And that's how we design our pack and that's how we distribute it during the month of Ramadan. Well, subhanAllah, undoubtedly very interesting, this distribution with regards to the month of Ramadan. Ramadan hampers, iftar, suhoor hampers, and the opportunity of sitting, dining, and enjoying iftar. Yes, enjoying iftar with our fellow brothers and sisters who sometimes are not as privileged as us. We're going to be going for a short break. When we come back, inshallah, we'll be engaging Hafiz Hassan further. Stay with us. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, Alhamdulillah, we have in studio with us the Regional Director of Africa Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International, Hafiz Hassan Shunara. We've been chatting at length about Ramadan and some of the initiatives, three initiatives in particular that Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International are involved in and are appealing for with regards to the month of Ramadan. Hafiz Hassan, we've spoken at length about the Iftar Suhoor box, uh, the composition and the contents of that box being geared towards the particular season we're in, which is Ramadan in winter. We've spoken about the Ramadan hamper as well, having not only nutritious uh, ingredients for meals to be prepared at people's homes, but also a little bit of winter warmth. You haven't shared with us much insight into this idea of feeding entire villages in Southern Africa. Feeding entire village in, in South Africa is our third initiative. You know, feed a village in Africa it basically entails feeding daily, feeding daily iftar and suhoor meals at various remote villages across uh, southern Africa. And remember, the African Muslim Agency has teams on the ground who construct, uh, you know, the water wells, the boreholes, the masajid, the Islamic centers in various parts of Africa. And obviously, with each year, there's more and more masajid that, that have been built. There's more water wells uh, that, that have been built. So more and more villages have benefited in some way or form with the projects that we've uh, carried out throughout the year. So come Ramadan time, we obviously, there'll be more feeding taking place at these villages. Remember, when we build a project in, in a village, we're not only building a masjid and then leave the, the, the village. We build a masjid and then we are obligated to continue programs in that, in that village, whether it be come Ramadan time, whether it be Qurbani time, whether it be ongoing dawah program or madrasa syllabus, uh, or empowerment or skills program. So we get involved with the village that we, that we do a project in. So likewise in Ramadan, we have the Feed the Village program. Uh, you, you know, just uh, AMA have constructed over 5,500 massages across Africa alone. And every single village will be conducting iftar and suhoor meals. Uh, across South Africa. It only costs 2,500 to feed a village per day. Unless you have a number of families who are living there in straw huts, who congregate at the masjid throughout the day, there's a programs taking place, dawah programs, ladies programs, little competitions for kids to recite the Quran and you know recite surahs that we, we do um, in Ramadan. And come iftar time, we obviously have mass feeding for the entire village uh, for those fasting. Come suhoor time, we have the feeding as well. Truly amazing how it starts with water as the source of life, either a well or a borehole that's sunk. And then from there, you know, some sort of community infrastructure is built, either a masjid or an Islamic center, together with imams, quarters, etc. Hence, the imam is uh, accommodated on the premises, uh, has the ability to run regular programs. And now in the month of Ramadan, you see that there's the opportunity of bringing that community that rural community together from their straw huts towards this brick and, brick and mortar structure where they have and they observe suhoor together and then observe iftar together. Uh, this has been done, alhamdulillah, for a few years now as well. Tell us about the number of people who, alhamdulillah, have benefited from these suhoor and iftar at the many masajid constructed uh, by, via the facilitation of Africa Muslims Agency. Well, no, alhamdulillah, the South African community and South African donors have, have donated uh, generously towards the Masjid uh, program, the Masjid campaign of the African Muslim Agency. And, and so that has enabled us to construct a number of masajid in northern Mozambique, across Malawi as well. So we will be conducting a lot of feeding uh, during the month of Ramadan, amongst other programs. Last year, alhamdulillah, over one million people benefited through this program in terms of uh, Feed the Fasting. Uh, and it's only through the generosity of donors out there. Uh, you know, and, and it's because of donors who have constructed masajid 
uh, and, and centers and water wells. Uh, you know, now that they've established some uh, project in that village, uh, there will now be activity. And so we appeal to donors who've, who've done a project with the African Muslim Agency in some part of Africa, contact the officers and find out how you can get involved in Ramadan time because there will be Ramadan programs, Tarawi, etc., taking place at your, at your village that you have uh, benefited some way or the other. So you can see how you can get involved and how you can feed a village. So yes, like you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, people coming from straw huts, different, you know, people, some people walking up to three, four kilometers a day just for Tarawi uh, to benefit from the programs that will be taking place, inshallah. Well, proof of the word is in the deed. And we're going to be sharing with you some of the footage from the Ramadan Feed the Village and other programs run during the month of Ramadan under the facilitation of African Muslims Agency. Watch this. <laughs> I'm certain you'd agree with me that those visuals epitomize empathy, a concept that Muhammad وسلم, wanted us to imbibe within ourselves during the month of Ramadan. Hafiz Hassan, you mentioned that over a million people benefited from the Feed the Village, the program, during last year's Ramadan. What's the plan this year? Alhamdulillah, like you correctly mentioned, uh, through the generosity of donors last year, we reached the target of uh, feeding million, over a million people across Africa. And that's daily. And that's daily, iftar and suhoor meals every single day throughout the month of Ramadan. This year, inshallah, the goal is to reach 3 million people across Africa. Now, it's not just to feed 3 million people, but it's to impact 3 million lives, 3 million uh, people who, who belong to families. Well, in, in the 3 million people, you have the elderly, the orphans, uh, the teachers, the alims, the, alims, the students, the young, the old, um, across Africa who are fasting but are also in need. And like you and I, they also need to, to have iftar and they also need to have suhoor at the time of, uh, before uh, commencing with the fast. So the target is to, three, three, to feed 3 million people across Africa at the various massage and Islamic centers. The desire for anyone who hears the opportunity of impacting on 3 million lives is to get off the chair, like I feel like doing right now, and go and be a part of this action, this action in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there any way in which us sitting here in South Africa can physically be a part of this initiative? Yes, of course, Abdul Rahman. You know, we always encourage the donors, apart from the two and a half percent zakah of your wealth, give us a two and a half percent zakah of your time and accompany the African Muslims Agency, whether it be in South Africa or outside South Africa, to the ground, as we call it, 
to personally see the conditions of people in Africa, to see where your donation is going, see your donation in action, and see the difference it's making in the lives of many across South Africa as well as in Africa. Uh, and, and in this regard, in the 22nd of June, uh, in Ramadan, uh, the African Muslim Aids will be having feeding uh, throughout the month of Ramadan, but on the 22nd, donors may accompany the African Muslim Aids in Gauteng to Freedom Park, uh, it's just the south of Johannesburg, uh, and, and share iftar with young students in a madrasa who are doing madrasa class daily in a shack environment. Um, you know, last year we spent the iftar with them, and it's a humbling feeling when you're there with them. It is very cold, uh, you know, as it came to iftar time, and you share, you break the fast with them, uh, and you see the joy they have on their faces. It, it cannot be explained uh, through this medium, but you have to uh, per, you know, personally witness it. Similarly, in, uh, in the Western Cape, on the 22nd as well, we'll be having a uh, you know, feeding as well. Donors contact the Cape Town office there to find out more information. And likewise in Durban as well. Donors can contact any of the offices to find out when we're having the feedings and, and where, where donors can, can, can participate personally, inshallah. Well, viewers are also privy to another project or initiative by African Muslims Agency in conjunction with ITV in the build up to the month of Ramadan. You want to share some details with regards to that? Yes, you know, on, on, on the 26th of June, it's called Layla to Sadaqa, or the Night of Charity. That's how we term it, the Night of Charity. Your opportunity to donate generously towards the Feed the Fasting campaign, as well as other campaigns of the African Muslim Asia, which they are running throughout the month of Ramadan. Your opportunity, the donor out there, to donate your zakah, your lillah, your sarka, to make a difference to the lives of people you've just seen on the screen, and to make a difference to the lives of people who are waiting for, you know, for, for aid during the month of Ramadan, uh, whether it be the Feed the Fasting program, whether it be the operations in Lebanon for Clef, Lepton, Palace for Palestinian and Syrian children, whether it be the construction of water wells, boreholes, or any of the ongoing campaigns or sustainable projects you'd like to contribute, tune in to ITV on the 26th of June after Taraweeh Salah at 10.30 p.m. inshallah, and pledge your donation, your charity, and let your and see your charity make a difference in the lives of people in Africa and other parts of the world, inshallah. Well, Hafiz Hassan, our du'as go out to you and the rest of the African Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International team for the sterling work that you're doing. And viewers, remember, as Ramadan edges ever closer, the du'a taught to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma sallimna li Ramadan, wa sallim Ramadan lana, wa sallimhu lana mutaqabbala. With that, we bid you farewell. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله From Mauritania to Ethiopia From Tunisia to Somalia We are the children of Africa لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله